Well, we get to see Dylan run now. <laughs> My name is Dylan Miner. I am a Michif or Métis artist. I was born and raised in Michigan. You know, I've been working with the youth, uh, the, the youth through the Turtle Island Center for the last two weekends. We basically built the bike up from scratch, talked about transportation, put the bike together. Today we, we spent uh, the afternoon screen printing pennants. I have a PhD in the history of art, and, and so part, a component of my, of my research um, is on Métis history, but it's also an aspect of my creative practice as well. I live in a community that uh, has one of the largest fluent Anishinaabe Mwin speaking uh, populations in the States. And so the project is called Anishna Bensag Bimskoweb Shkigewag, which the elders tell me and the fluent speakers tell me means native kids ride bikes. The first day we, we, we built the bike, we put the parts together, we put it up. Um, you know, the bottom brackets and headsets were installed, but other than that, we, we constructed this work tricycle, um, which, you know, for, for many of them was the first time they put together a trike. Um, and then we, we collaborated to build this wooden crate. Um, the youth designed um, diff different kind of decorations. We reupholstered the seat together. They created these beautiful, um, these beautiful uh, um, artworks or these uh, kind of tassels out of horse, uh, horse hair. We did some reupholstering and, and made a little hand drum in the frame. So the kids did the leather work on that and, and kind of uh, strapped it up. So they went everything from kind of building the bike to decorating it to designing the, the flags and the pennants. So I started working on this project thinking about, about the bicycle as a conduit to, for working with urban youth as a way to investigate not the traditional knowledge of the elders, uh, traditional ecological knowledge, transportation, all of these things. And so um, the project I've been working on here at the Art Gallery of Windsor and with the, turtle, the youth at Turtle Island um, kind of uses the bicycle as a way to think about indigenous migratory histories and transporter histories but also uses it as a way to, uh, becomes a vehicle literally um, to, to deal with uh, printmaking. I'm trained as a printmaker and think about the, the democratic forces of printmaking. Maybe some of the, the mentors have done birch bark biting and can show the young ones how to do birch bark biting, but that's a traditional way of kind of making images where you take a, you know, you take some of the layers of birch bark and then you bite it with your incisor and you make a pattern based on your biting. What does it mean if we build a, a, a bicycle, a, a work tricycle, that then also kind of uh, seconds as a print, mobile printmaking studio? What sorts of things can urban native kids kind of do in spaces that you know otherwise might not be feasible? This is part of a you know a STEM program, so it's uh, you know thinking about science, technology, engineering, and math. And so you know to be honest, we we really did use and incorporate engineering skills and kind of looked at traditional ecological knowledge and incorporated, um, you know, uh, using al-Qaeda and having to soak that and so thinking about those sorts of issues. So they're doing these real life problems that, that you know, don't seem like problems to them. They're just part of the artwork. Lightly. You're not going to push down. You just want to like drag it across. Yep, that's so, like that. Okay, go ahead. I come to uh, my art making practice as an activist, and so much of my art, art uh, kind of activist practice was uh, involved in doing youth projects. Um, and so today, most much of my artistic practice kind of emerge out of what you know what some people may call the art of social practice, others call socially engaged art, where um, you know. Uh, I work with community and collaborate with youth in a way that, you know, uh, we make things together, but the things we make together are not the artwork. The artwork is in that collaboration and that learning and sharing together. And so for me, right, as an artist, I'm very interested in that moment of collaboration, of sharing. But also, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in, uh, in, in youth projects and, and working with youth because they have a lot to share to teach me and I have a lot or I hope I you know I have a lot that I can share with them. You see any other ones? Oh here's one. Good. This is a very very important It's really important right now because we're kind of some folks are celebrating the War of 1812 and I'm descended from uh, a group of Métis that uh, following the War of 1812, well, <clears throat> following the War of 1812 and the signing of the Treaty of Ghent, left Drummond Island, which became part of the U.S. and moved to the to the Georgian Bay to the Canadian side. And so, um, 
that history is one that's central to my own family. And then I grew up in a Mexican farm worker family, which kind of within the Chicano or Mexican American activist movement, there's this, this saying, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. Thinking about the way that borders kind of uh, become superimposed on indigenous populations already living there. Um, and so if we look out, I'm sitting here, and if I look out the window, I can see right across the river kind of into Detroit. And I think, you know, here in the Great Lakes, those indigenous kind of relationships have been kind of people have been going across that border forever. Um, yet for some reason, you know, it becomes harder and harder, um, especially in a, in, a, in a moment of, you know, after 9-11 and in a kind of real crackdown on, uh, on the, you know, that happens in the States especially. So, so for me, working with youth on both sides of the border begins to, to kind of, to tease out some of those issues and to you know communicate with them and for them to share with me some of those experiences growing up along the border. Thinking about the border and know which 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 of us are on the north side of the border, which I know here in Windsor we're actually on the south. And it's kind of interesting, right? That would be we're doing these two. One of the things that's beautiful about screen printing is because at its most at its most simple, it's it's just basic reproduction. It's something that humans have done since time immemorial. From from you know spitting or, or kind of projecting a pigment over your hand onto onto a wall and getting the shape of that and so there's something that's that's amazing about about actually printing things but you know in 2012 we become so disconnected from the reproduction and, and hands-on printmaking where we write a paper or we work on the computer you print it out and it's this digital or mechanical process um, and so when you when, when youth I think from my perspective when you see or actually make a drawing and then be able are able to reproduce that through screen printing they have this really visceral hands-on experience ready yes. okay what do you think one more okay so we're gonna go back now and then we're gonna get lots of pressure ready nice okay so i think there's a real connection that they have when they're like wow that's something i made and now there's a hundred of them and now they're going to be kind of hung or exhibited in a public space for, you know, for my neighbors, for my cousins, for everyone to see. Um, the, the intention is that the pennants will then be um, strung and hung in urban spaces here in Windsor and Detroit as a way of kind of m not reclaiming these spaces, but demonstrating that the indigenous peoples that we are still in this territory, these are our spaces, they have this, they, they have been, they are, and they will always be indigenous land. So that, you know, those pennants will be hung. And after that, I hope to continue working with the youth here. What do you think? I mean, yeah. maybe we could put something small here. What are the other elements there? What if? Okay, there's children. Okay, I'm gonna show you the ones that we didn't mm -hmm. use. Children, tobacco, and spring. Those are the ones that we haven't really put in there yet. Right. Um, the next step for, for this project is that um, I'll be doing a very similar thing with the youth on the Detroit side. Um, those bikes and the pennants and some other materials will be exhibited uh, in the Art Gallery of Windsor as part of an exhibition um, this January. That will be up for, for two months. I hope the bikes then, you know, above and beyond any relationship I have with them, go and, you know, um, some of the mentors, some of the youth here, take them and, and do what they want. Maybe take them to, you know, there's some conversation about going to Walpole, um, going some other places. So, uh, you know, I'd love to see that happen. Take that up. It's like a bluish purple. It becomes even more exciting when we bring in, kind of make, create, when I've done these projects where we bring in the elders. So we'll bring in language speakers, kind of, you know, uh, younger youth, middle-aged youth, kind of younger adults like myself, if I'm still in that category, but I'm, I think I'm moving out of that category. So, you know, when we get these kind of cross-generational projects, I think they just become so much richer than, you know, an artist, myself, sitting in a studio making artworks, right? They become much more alive, and I think that's what the knowledge is about, this living entity.